La da da, that's better. Look at that. <laughs> So the fun, fun part today is gonna be uh, that's fine, that's nice, that's lovely. Uh, gonna be can Chris work out how to do a sort of cross the streams type synchronization so that he's got the stream live on Twitch where it's fast, and then comments coming back from something else where it's 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 faster still. Um, so yes, we're going to be kicking off in about a, a minute or two, and trying to do, or attempting, or valiantly trying to solve uh, day two of Advent of Code. Uh, in uh, So I'm sticking to C-sharp this week, um, because C-sharp is nice. It's my favorite language that isn't JavaScript, or Amstrad Logo. And trying to do Advent of Code in Amstrad Logo, I think, is, is a, possibly a little ambitious because it's hard enough to get... Actually, it's pretty easy getting the emulators working. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to talk nonsense for a few minutes while we wait for folks to get connected and uh, see how it's all working. <laughs> uh, this is what I do. I just talk to cameras all the time. This is like my entire life now. Uh, so for the rest of you watching, Luce and I are doing a program committee for NDC London, uh, which is in January and is online and is awesome, so you should totally buy a ticket and come to that, because it's three days of really, really amazing talks about all kinds of stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, we, we can... Uh, if it's day two, why is the name day three code? This is day three. It's the third. Uh, yeah, day three, day two. There's an eventual consistency problem with, with, with the, the screens and the brains and everything. It'll all be fine in the end, I'm sure. So, right. Um, so... <laughs> my Python ate my Raspberry Pi. Uh, I know, do, do Pythons eat raspberries? Do Pythons eat pie? We, we never know. Um, we may find out. Right, let's 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 have a look. Uh, so this week to try and uh, I've had several people ping me and go, you know, Advent of Code gets really hard, right? Like you're gonna try and do it every day in an hour. Um, now maybe this is the uh, hubristic confidence of the mediocre white man talking. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have a go. I am gonna try really hard, and I'm gonna see if we can, you know, keep up with it. But in order to do that, I think as it goes on, I'm gonna try and cut down on some of the the friction and stuff that we've had on the first couple of days. Um, so I have a solution. Here here that is up and running and ready to go, and I've already, I've got full-blown Visual Studio because my VS Code plugin has been a little bit uh, complicated over the last couple of days. Um, so, ah, uh, David, how you doing? We just did, just did day one and two, so I'm sure this will be painful. Uh, so we did day two yesterday, and then we went back and we solved day one in Rockstar, and ended up with a wonderful Toto-style song about someone's mother who was a rhinoceros, uh, and the lion was the daybreak in the jungle, and all that kind of stuff. Hey, Cynciat, hello, welcome, how are you? Uh, so, right, let's... Uh, let's uh, let me make that chat there just a, just, just a little bigger. Uh, so the thing we need to remember to do today, apparently I've been committing a, a, a grotesque breach of etiquette uh, by not raiding at the end of my streams. I should ask everyone who we should raid, and then you all suggest people we go and raid, and then we raid them. Um, but uh, this, this, this is me. Advent of Code is kind of my crash course in live streaming. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Um, so Chris, the question that I have is, can you get this up and running so that you are watching it on Twitch, but then using YouTube to send us comments, so that one, your chat isn't 25 seconds behind, and two, everyone else watching on YouTube thinks you can see into the future? That is the question. So if I if I name an animal, drop the name of the animal that I say into the chat, we'll see how quickly it comes through. So I am gonna say giraffe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, we're going to come back to that. Clearly, we haven't been able to engineer the space-time continuum uh, in the way that I thought we might be able to. <laughs> no, just Chris. Um, so so we got this, this slight thing. Twitch has about four seconds of latency, uh, or it should have. Uh, YouTube has about 30 seconds of latency, which means if you're watching on YouTube and you're putting comments in, quite often what will happen is... Uh, <laughs> I'll be doing something and you'll kind of see what I've done wrong and so you'll make a comment but then in the 30 seconds it takes for your comment to get here uh, either someone else will comment or I'll see the mistake and I'll fix it and then somebody else, and then like 15 seconds later the comment will pop up going do that and it's like we did that already Surly Dev hello welcome 
Right, so, um, I had a little look at uh, the, the part one of day three of Advent of Code. I haven't kind of sat down and started writing any code, but I did have a little look and I've sort of been mentally digesting it over the course of the day. So let's have a look at what we are up against on day three. I believe it, no, not cheat sheet version, go away. Uh, somebody said on Twitter the other day, are you doing the cheat sheet version? I was like, what's the cheat sheet version? And they never got back to me and explained what the cheat sheet version was. So I don't know. Um, <coughs> right. So, the advent of code. Uh, day three, toboggan trajectory. With the toboggan login. Toboggan login, that's kind of nice. We could use that in Rockstar later. Toboggan login problems resolved. You set off towards the airport. Uh, travel by toboggan might be easy. It's certainly not safe. There's very minimal steering, and the area is covered in trees. You need to see which angles will take you near the fewest trees. Due to local geology, trees only grow on exact integer coordinates in a grid. You can make a map, your puzzle input. Okay, cool. Now, by a happy coincidence, I've spent a chunk of the last two weeks building a parser in JavaScript for a thing called an IPuzz format, which is a cryptic crossword uh, JSON format. Um, so, uh, we're just going to test Chris's latency. So, Chris, I'm going to count three, two, one, then I'm going to say the name of an animal, and you echo it back in the chat as soon as you see it. Uh, three, two, one, bison! Okay, so we got about eight, nine seconds on there. Yeah, that'll do. We can work with that. I'll leave I'll leave plenty of nice pauses. Yeah, there we go. That's better. I think we can get it better still, but but uh we'll we'll come back to that later. Anyway, so yeah. So we're gonna be parsing some ASCII art. Um open squares of dots, okay. Trees are hashes, okay. Uh, this is the closest to a ski slope I'm going to get this season. Okay, fine. Uh, these aren't the only trees. Due to something you read about once, arboreal genetics, and by in the same pattern repeat... Oh! Interesting. So this this pattern is going to be like that one, and then that one, and then that one, and then that one, and then that one. It's probably just your ad blocker, Chris. Or your chat blocker, or some such thing. You tried deleting cookies? Different browser? Different laptop? Different account? Um... So we start in the top left corner, so we're going to start there, boom, and uh, we need to reach the bottom. So we need to get off the bottom of the grid. Uh, the toboggan can only follow a few specific slopes. Start by counting all the trees you would encounter for slope right, three, down, one. Okay, my spidey sense is tingling here. That in part two, these numbers are going to be different. Uh, don't give it away, but I have a I have a suspicion that that's what what. So maybe these should be parameters to the the methods. So from your starting position, check the position that is right three. So one two three and down one is going to be there. One two three one is going to be there. One two three one is going to be uh, okay. Uh, ooh, hang on. So zero. So one two three one. One two three one. Yep. Okay. I think I got it. Um, in this example, traversing the map would cause you to encounter seven trees. Start at the top left corner, follow a slope of right three and down one. How many trees would you encounter? Let's get some puzzle input. So there's my puzzle input, and this thing is gonna go wrapping infinitely off to the right, so let's save that as D Projects GitHub Advent of Code 2020 Day 3, Day 3, Day 3 Code Input dot txt, okay, and then the quick and dirty, let's just make sure all the things are in the right place uh, console dot right line I wish I could type and file dot no file yes thank you very much dot read all lines input dot txt dot count yep all right that'll do boom run that what do we get that's gonna come up over there And it's going to fail. And why is it going to fail? It's going to fail because... Uh, not found, because input.txt, I need to uh, stop running that. And uh, solution explorer, input.txt, properties. Ooh, that's going to get gnarly very quickly. Let's drop that in there. 
and open that and pin that and now grab properties and put properties in the bottom half of that pane and then unpin that and unpin that and uh, this is getting messy so there it is copy always okay run that and see if it's got 323 hello world okay so we're reading in all the lines from that input file now this is nice this is fine so <laughs> Uh, we need to... what are we doing? We're starting at top left, which will be 0, 0. Um, uh, ooh. I need a copy of NCrunch. Yeah. Um, I have a copy of NCrunch, but the license is for an older version, and I didn't get around this morning to sorting out what was wrong with my, my license file on it. Um, but we'll, we'll figure this out. So, uh, what we need to do is we need to think we're going to parse in the input file and we are going to build a some sort of grid, and then I think we want a method where we tell it our vector, our x and y coordinates per step, and it runs it against the grid and it tells us what is, uh, how many trees we've gotten and, and what's going to come back with it. So, uh, and today I have exactly one hour. I, I cannot overrun because I have to go and do things because pubs are open, so I need to find one that isn't horrible. Uh, so, class program static void. So, let's drop in a class. Uh, what do we call this? Uh, it's going to be the, 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 the mountain. That'll do nicely. And uh, let's throw in... So I'm going to do something a bit naive here. I'm going to put in a um, public mountain string input. I'm going to put a parser inside the constructor because it's advent of code and none of this code is going live in production. So uh, let's say this dot... <laughs> uh, so what do we got? We've got a... There's only two types of things in there. There's tree and there's... Uh, let's have a look. we got trees and we've got open. So open and tree. So we could do that as an enum or we could do it as a... Uh, just a massive map of integers where each cell contains the number of trees that appear in that cell. So... Um, Oh, we just leave it as is. Yeah, that would work. Uh, da, da, da. Let's do... Input a dot. Does dot net have lines? No, it doesn't. Input dot split environment dot new line. So var lines equals that. Um... And this dot uh, cells equals lines dot select. Each line we are going to go to line dot select. C is the character, and that character is going to go to. Uh, that should give us. Uh, let's do a C equals. What did we have in there? So that's a hash. Means this cell contains one trees, otherwise it contains zero trees. All right, that should be interesting. That needs to be a character, not a string, because that matters. Obviously, that matters hugely. Uh, mountain. This dot. Uh, da, 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 da. So this is going to be an int of cells. Yep, private int cells. That's fine. That's fine. Line dot select that dot to array dot to array. Yep. 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 Yeah. Cannot. Cannot convert int int to type int. Okay. So that needs to be uh, one of those. Hmm, no, I don't want that to be that. I want it to be a single array with a multi-dimensional... Actually, no, we can do it with a nested array. It doesn't matter. We can we can come back. Let's let's get it working and... Uh... <laughs> so, what do we got? We've got uh, int square square of cells. So, long lines equals this, our cells equals that. Um, so, let's do a... Uh... Problem statement is a little vague on what exactly it means to be a slope. So let me just do a quick uh, dump on this. So let's say var mountain equals new mountain 
and this is going to be file.readAllTextInput.txt and da, 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 let's make that cells public just so we can get in and poke around in its innards uh, so console.writeline uh, switching between JavaScript and, and C sharp this many times bakes my noodle so cells.length mountain.cells.length obviously so there's that This will work because it is a rectangular array. If we were doing ragged arrays, which is totally a thing that you can do, this would not work. Uh, and I am going to just spin up uh, cross X and down Y. Yeah, 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 yep, 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 yep. So, uh, nope, I need a new window here. CD day three, yeah, CD day three. CD code, ah, day three code, thank you very much. Uh, .NET run, is that gonna work? Yes it is, look at that. Amazing, one and one, 10,336. I don't think that's right, because I do not think, so what is the problem that we've got here? Uh, lines equals input dot split on environment dot new line. Let me open my input dot text file. Something there has uh... David says general hint. I find it easier to write a test that covers the example case before trying the your input version. Uh, so that might be a good idea. Let's try doing that. Um... Easy to get lost in massive test inputs. Let's grab. So it's actually the input is that, isn't it? So let's jump back over here. And there we go. That's that. That's that. So let's try a uh, var input equals. Multi-line string literals in C sharp for the win. Um, there we go. That's that. Uh, new mountain. So now I can take out that input. So cells dot length and cell zero dot length. So that should give me what? That's nine through nineteen. So that should be ten by one, two, three, four, five. So that's a ten by ten grid. So I should have ten by ten on there. So lines equals input dot split environment dot new line. That should split that into ten single line strings. And then lines dot select should do that, and I think I've got a bracket in here that's gone in the wrong place. Uh, yeah, that two array should be there. No. So lines dot select is going to give us a uh, something. Boom dot to array so lines dot select line so if I go line to just and I say uh, new int that should now give us something along those lines uh, yep 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 input blob answer is seven let's run that see what we get 11 by 0, so length is uh, 11 because, is that right? Are there 11, is the length 11 of a 10 element array? We'll come back to that and that's 0, so if I now say 1, 2, 3, that should be fine. So now I'm expecting 11 by 3. Okay, so that's working correctly. So the problem in here is that this thing here needs to, I need a line and I need that line to be line. Dot select C goes to, and if that character equals that 
hash, then it is a 1, otherwise it is a 0, and that needs to be dot two arrayed. So this should give me an array of arrays, right? 11 by 11. Okay, that's looking pretty good. That's promising. So, cells.length, so that's 1, 2, <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All right, it is 11 by 11. I believe the maths. Yeah, max index equals 10, length equals 11. I don't have a blank line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. They've given us an 11, 11 by grid in the example, and I thought it was 10, because why would anyone give you 11 when they could give you a nice round number like 10 or 16? So. We have parsed the mountain correctly. Now what we need to do is a uh, public int count trees. Uh, and I'm going to go int uh, x and y or across and down. I'm actually going to go with uh, vx and vy, which is your... Um, no, dx and dy, because, because, because physics. Uh, reason being, I'm probably going to want x and y for something any second now. Um, so we are going to start our x, y coordinates at 0, x equals 0, and y equals 0, and we want a nested loop here that says, now x is going to wrap, isn't it? Because the whole thing is, is modular -y. Uh So our coordinate... <laughs> It is quite fun. One of the things that is is really like obvious when you're watching someone else coding, and and you're completely oblivious when you're coding, is when you come up with names and you put variables in the names because it might be useful, and then your brain goes off in a completely different direction, and everyone else is like, "What is? What's that thing for? Why did you leave that there?" And you're like, "Oh, I completely forgot. I even made that a thing." Um, so uh, count trees that in x equals zero, y equals zero. Yes, that's all fine. Why is that putting a uh, that's oh, it's 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 a squiggly underliney thing. Uh, x equals naught. So that can those can be vars because we know they're both zeros. So what we want to do is uh, while what's the best kind of loop to use for this? I'm just gonna for loop it for var x equals naught. X is less than now x is just going to go round and round and round and round and round, isn't it? Across and then back to zero and then across and then back to zero. So x is going to be... doesn't need to be a loop. Uh, for var y equals zero, y is less than now. Our array of ints there, it is intuitive to index into that integer as x and y. And... I just want to make sure that that is parsing that the correct way round. So our x here is going to be... Ah, it's going to be backwards, because the first coordinate is going to give us the row, and the second coordinate is going to give us the column, isn't it? So why is that? Y is going to be less than... Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Height equals this dot cell zero dot length. That should be fine. Uh, okay, you can be capital height if you really want. And width doesn't matter, but we do need to know what it is so we can do the modular thing. Uh, map width, not actually the height of the mountain, it's the height of the map because the mountain is the map infinitely repeated because of that thing we read about once. So this dot cells dot length, that's fine. So count trees from there to there. So y is zero, y is less than this dot height. Uh, y plus plus. So this is gonna be uh, height. Is, you know you're right, Chris. Yep, that's that and that's that. So that's fine and that's fine. Uh, map with, yep, 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 yep. I like this pair programming thing with like half the internet. Well, 21 people. There's only 42 people on the internet, right? So you're half of it, I figure. So, y equals zero, why is this and that? So, we are now going to say... Uh, do, 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 do. We want to look at this cell at x and y. Uh, tree count 
plus equals, so tree count equals zero. Tree count uh, plus equals this dot cells y and dx. And then uh, dx plus plus, and then if dx is greater than uh, this dot, or greater than or equal to this dot map width, dx equals zero. Uh, so actually, and now we can do a because we need to look at the first one, so we got to start on zero. So we could do a horrible thing where. Uh, no, that needs to be x. x needs to be 0. So x is 0, y is 0. Look at yx, then dx++, plus plus, and if dx is greater than the width of the map, loop it back round to 0, and then return the tree count. Alright, so there is uh, that, there's that, there's that, so... Mountain equals new mountain. We don't need those debug lines. Uh, let's just break that into mountain.cs so that the thing is a little neater and not quite so unwieldy. Program.cs uh, var trees equals mountain.count trees. And in this initial one, our dx velocity, it's three o'clock and one down, isn't it? Three, one. And the answer that we are looking for is dum 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 seven. So we are expecting to get seven. So let's just run that and console dot right line trees. <coughs> dot net run three. Okay, so it counted trees but it did not count the correct trees. <laughs> Incrementing the slope doesn't seem right. What have I done wrong? Uh, I need, no, you're right, that needs to be x plus plus, and that needs to be y x is not, y is not, y is that, so y plus equals dy, and x plus equals dx is what I should be doing. And then, if that is then overflowed, so it's, it's ding, now, hang on, this is interesting, because, yeah, that needs to be x plus plus equals d uh, x equals x plus dx, but that whole thing needs to be uh, modulus is that one in dot thingy? Yeah, x plus equals dx. No. Which one binds tighter, the plus equals or the modulus? Because dx mod width, dx is, is 3, and width is 11, and 3 mod 11 is always going to be... Yeah, so it, it needs to be x plus dx. That whole lot needs to be modulo the width, which is going to be this dot map width. So, yeah, always the expression before the assignment. What? Da -da 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 -da. Ah, uh, so x plus equals is gonna... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, I gotcha. Um, all right, let me see if this works. Then I'm gonna change it to something I think might work, and I'm gonna see if that works. And if it does work, we've learned something. And if it doesn't work, we've also learned something. Because there's no such thing as a failed experiment. Seven! Look at that! So if I do x plus equals dx mod this dot map width, is that gonna give us... Boom! No, I thought that would fail to work. Yeah, so x equals x plus dx modulo this dot map width. All right, so we can now count to... Oh, what did I do? Cancel the build, that's fine. Come on, run. Could not copy because it is being used by another process. Curious. Uh, it's not running in there, and it's not running in there, and I think I have accidentally... There, okay, seven, that's fine. Right, so I'm going to consider that my test case implemented correctly, so now I am going to jump back over to my program, 
and I am gonna do a file dot read all lines. I've just had an interesting thought, and I've had a thought, and that thought is, um, is the input.txt file that I found on the internet using the same line endings as the computer that I am using to do my program? Uh, and I have no idea what the quickest way of discovering that would be. Uh, let's have a look. File.read all lines input.txt. There we go. Ding. Input.txt. File save as. Save as, save as, save as, save with encoding. Yes. Western European lined endings. Windows. Yep, that's fine. Thank you very much. Um, so one of the fun things, .NET's gone cross-platform, but there's still kind of weirdness with uh, environment.newline. Is uh, It's determined at compile time. So if you compile something and then you cross-compile it and try to run it on something else, you can get some weirdness coming out of it. File.read all lines input.txt. Uh, no, that should just be read all text, because it wants a big string. It's going to split it inside the parser. Right, you ready, friends? This is it, the moment of truth. Are we allowed to go through to part two and win a special cardboard cigar? .NET run out of input. Bang, that never worked. Why did that never work? Because, because what? Read all text, input.txt, mountain, input.split. Uh, the index was outside the bounds of the array. Line 21, the variable input is assigned, but its value is never used. Where is input assigned? Mountain string input input dot split. I think something just didn't save properly there. That's what I think. No, I was wrong. Uh, day three, day of co. That is program dot cs line eight eight eight. Okay, that's the input that never gets used. Right, we can scrub that out because that's not being used anymore. Uh, new mountain file dot read all text input dot txt that should be fine. There's our input. That's good. Hmm. That's gonna ah uh, blank line at the end. That might be causing headaches with it. Um, yeah, it's an empty line at the end of the text file. Uh, so what I need to do on that is I want lines. Uh, Input dot split spring split options dot remove empty entries might give me what we need. Two hundred and seventy. Let's poke that number into the internet and see what we get back out of the other side. Uh, file dot read all lines. Will that give us back the the blank line at the end or not? That's the correct answer. We are one gold star closer. Right, before we look at part two, uh, let's just try... I just want to try what David suggested in the chat there, um, which is uh, the file.read all lines. I want to see if that is actually going to eliminate the lines for us. So uh, I am going to say instead string input, and this.cells equals input.select on that. So we're going to move the string split out of there. The mountain now takes an array, and if we put in read all, oop, read all lines, is that gonna filter out the empty line for us? <laughs> Let's have a look. Boom, 270. Okay, so there we go. So yeah, file dot read all lines doesn't choke if you have a blank line at the end of uh, the. The, the 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 wasp name so that's that can come out that can come out that's nice there we go 270 uh, boom so cd dot dot cd dot dot, CD dot, dot uh, git status git at dot git commit minus m message solved part one of day three in c sharp yeah go go gadget github boom all right so next part two now, if my spidey sense is being uncannily spidey sensey, I'm going to need to change the three and the one to be some other numbers. Um, time to check the rest of the slopes. Okay, cool. 
determine the number of trees you would encounter if you start at the top left corner and traverse. So uh, we got one, one, three, one, five, one, seven, one, one, two. Ah, this will be fun. What do you get if you multiply together the number of trees encountered on each of the existing slopes? So... Hey, Dimitri! How you doing? <laughs> uh, the task we are working on, hang on, let me show you. It's uh, over here. That's what we are looking at. <coughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, that's all right. Uh, we have a hard start after an hour, but I'm pretty confident we're going to be able to do it. Okay, so we now need to do this. Now, there's an interesting... I'm just going to Google something, because what we've got here is we've got each of our inputs is a pair of integers. And I believe that in .NET, there is a class called a tuple of an int and an int, which might give us quite a nice way of... Uh, doing things. Uh, folks who are kind of more up to speed with the latest cool stuff in .NET, is there a better way that a tuple of two ints... I mean, we could just create a little array, or we could do a this and a that and a something and a something else. Um, and, uh, but... I'm going to go with a tuple int int for, hit for this. So, let me see what the... Uh, there. That might be, might be the tuple syntax we can use. C sharp seven and later. Let's see what version of C sharp of C sharp I'm I'm cooking on here. Uh, so yeah, velocity with an accent and Y. Yep, lep, lep. So we could. Um, so let's. Uh, we're going to split this out. We're going to make this a little bit more. So uh, public class uh, vector. And a vector is gonna have a uh, public int x get set public int y get set and then over here count trees is gonna take a vector v which is what we are doing tree count equals that that y plus equals uh, v dot uh, y x plus x equals x plus v dot x. Okay, so that's going to blow up now, but now we can, let's throw in a uh, public vector. Uh, somebody told me a thing that I can't believe I never knew, which is that. C T O R tab tab uh, int x int y and that's going to be this dot x equals x this dot y equals y. Somebody in the chat is now going to say, "Oh no, C sharp nine includes a record type that you just go x and y and it infers them from the ether and does everything magically for you." So now we want to do uh, var inputs equals new uh, vector array of those things and that actually we can take that out because all the things in it are going to be. So, our test cases were from the advent of code website, which is over here. So, what do we got? One, one, new vector. Three, one, new vector. Five, one. So I don't know how many you did Advent of Code last year, but like within the first couple of days, they started sort of sowing these seeds of the the thing which was going to become the space navigation computer thing that that you ended up building over the course of it. Um, and I'm looking over the the first couple of exercises we've done so far this week, and I'm trying to think if any of these looks like the beginning of something that's going to become a really like significant gnarly code base by the end of this. Uh, that's just going to say ah no, do not remove the unused local variable. Um, so now we can do uh, var product, which is going to be the multiply together all the things, equals inputs dot select. I goes, uh, v is a vector, isn't it? Let's call that vector. Now that inputs is good. Inputs dot select. V goes to mountain dot count trees. V uh, dot 
so what do I want to do here? I want to map each of those to that, and then I want to... Hmm... There's a sum. I wonder if there's... Ah! Oh, so, so, so Link... <laughs> has a sequence.sum, which will give you the sum of uh, int code. Oh, some people are solving AOS advent of code in int code this year. Yeah, that's that's that, that's crazy. Uh, so, uh, inputs.sum, that goes to count trees, that. Uh, my typing goes to crap when I'm on TV. Um, product equals, thank you, inputs dot that uh, dot reduce so I want to I need to do a map release or I need an accumulator and I cannot remember so accumulator in C sharp what does that look like using an accumulator using an accumulator to multiply look at that uh, what no that is that is that is not an accumulator that is just a loop what the hell is progzu dot? Okay, bye bye. No, innumerable dot aggregate. That looks better. Uh, bad, bad, bad. Uh, don't you love method descriptions? Public static t result of aggregate t source t aggregate t result this dot and you're like okay no. Uh, seed value is the initial accumulator value and the specified function is used to select the result value. Give me a worked example of this. Aggregate uh, longest and next and that's going to fruits dot aggregate. So uh, commands in that dot aggregate, which isn't popping up because I don't have the inputs dot select goes to that dot aggregate. Uh, so t accumulate is going to be the seed is going to be zero and the method is going to be x, no, one, because we are aggregating a multiple, multiple not a sum. Um, and then we are going to have x, y, goes to x times y. I think that should give us a multiplication aggregator. So so just what we're doing there, let's just break this down because I kind of made a bit of a mess there and then and then kicked it back in. So inputs dot select is gonna say take every V here, which is each of these vectors in turn, one, two, three, four, five of those. So it's gonna say, right, take this vector and then translate that vector into the result of calling mountain dot count trees on this vector. So it's going to take first vector, turn that into a number, which is the tree count for that one. Second one, turn that into a tree count. Third one. So we're going to get back inputs dot select. This chunk of stuff here is going to be a. Uh, this will be a little bit clearer if I break it out into pieces. The tree counts equals that. So that gives us takes a list of vectors and translates it into a list of tree counts by um, so select in, in .NET link is kind of like map in uh, many other languages and then we are gonna say var um, total equals and then aggregate is gonna say alright if you've got a list of things and I wanna flatten those things into a single so I got a list of integers, and I want to start with something. I go right. This plus the first one. All right. Well, this times the first one. Okay. Uh, now the first one and the second one. Okay. Now the second one and the third one. Okay. Now the third one and the fourth one, and accumulate those or aggregate those into a result. And then at the end, we are gonna console dot write line total, and uh, we are gonna say. Um, so the, the the established map filter reduce weren't good enough for link. Apparently, uh, the story of link is interesting because the the poster child for... I'm going to go off on a little tangent for like one minute. Um, the poster child for Link in .NET was as a way of uh, translating language projections into database queries. It's a thing called Link to SQL, because they kind of invented Link, but they didn't have like a, a killer app to use in all their demos um, that would make people go, wow, this is amazing, because Link is actually underneath the map and the reduce stuff. There's actually some really, really clever stuff, uh, like it, a Link query or a Link expression can be projected into a database projection that runs against the remote database, but it only yields uh, results as you need them. Um, 
And so a lot of the early syntax was kind of as heavily influenced by uh, SQL as it was influenced by the work on MapReduce that was being done with you know functional and list processing languages. Uh, so yeah, we ended up with select instead of map, um, and uh, it, it's fine. I, I'm I'm all right with that. It's okay. Let's run this and see what we get. Uh, so place your bets, friends. What's it going to be? Is it going to be a Massive explosion? Is it going to be a number? Is it going to be a stack overflow exception? Uh, let's see what we got here. So I need to go into day three backslash day three backslash day three code, and I need to do a .NET run. And da, 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 boom, it's given me a number. That is a very, very promising start. Let's put that number in here and paste. And da, 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 da. That is the right answer. We are one gold star closer to saving our Christmas vacation. Share it on Twitter. 44 minutes to do both parts because we didn't do any interesting diversions today into doing anything in, in, in Rockstar. Uh, I just completed toboggan trajectory. Yes! Cool. Right. Boom. There we go. That is day three. Do you need a default value for aggregate? Uh, I don't know. Let's poke it and see. Uh, let me just. I, I'm just gonna spin up a new D C D project. C D GitHub. C D advent of code. Git add uh, commit minus m solve part two of day three in C sharp. So let's just take. Uh, we got a bit of time. I got 15 minutes. Let's let's just poke around a little bit, see what what we can get on here. Um, so if we if we leave that out of the aggregator, um, so the, the 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 difficulty. Let's see what that does. Is that going to work? It's other window. That window. Dot net. Run that. Yep, you're absolutely right. Um, so you can leave out the initial value on the aggregator, and instead of aggregating it with something, uh, it will just pick up the... Uh, um, yeah, that bit. Cool. There we go. That's it. That is advent of code day two in C Sharp completed. Um, Do you want to see what I was working on before I was doing this? Because before I was doing this, I was trying to add stack support to Rockstar, to the language syntax. Because uh, yesterday, when we were playing around with it, uh, what I discovered was uh, about 18 months ago, I got most of the way through adding stack support to Rockstar. Um, and I kind of I, I opened a draft PR where I hadn't written any documentation and stuff for it yet. And uh, then I, uh, I, I pushed that up and... Uh, can you think of any sort of enterprise-level, obscene, over-engineered approach to this problem? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So... Um... <laughs> so the, the first thing that I would do if I was being obscenely enterprise and over-engineering it is that I would get the input by scraping the website. Um, <laughs> which actually that's surprisingly difficult because uh, the advent of code is using Twitter authentication which would mean I would need to do a token exchange with Twitter's OAuth servers to be able to get a uh, I could, I could build something enterprisey that would only work for 15 minutes, because 15 minutes is the lifespan of an authentication token on the Twitter API. And after that, you need to refresh it. And to refresh it, you need to do a token exchange with Twitter's own authentication backend. Um, but I suspect a service that is built to be future-proof because it scrapes web pages instead of having hard-coded inputs, but we forget that we've left a 15-minute hard-baked authentication token into it. Uh, that would be very enterprisey. I, I think you will all agree. Um, but yeah, I mean, sure, we we could we could do some interesting stuff with this. Uh, what I'm wondering is if there was a way. So so the, the interesting. Um, <laughs> uh, that, let's really ski down the mountain. The, the thing that I'm interested, the thing that would actually make this interesting is that there is a point with the approach we've got here where 
the input file could become too big to read into memory. But because of the way the algorithm has been implemented, in theory, we could use a, uh, a read-only file stream. So we could do the whole thing on input of essentially arbitrary size. Like if they give us a, a, a 32 terabyte input file, we could still do it by just incrementing down and reading one line at a time. Uh, that would be a fun thing to do in the last 10 minutes here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a look and I'm going to see if we can build a version here that never actually reads the input file into memory. Um, <laughs> So let's have a look at C sharp input file stream. Uh, so file stream dot uh, read. So what I actually want to do is I want to read line from file stream in C sharp because this will give us streamed I/O. That uh, stream reader dot read line. Okay. So yeah. Because um, what this does, what the, the stream reader does, is instead of allocating a buffer for the entire input file, it's allocating a buffer for each line of input in turn. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, David Whitney might know this if he's still on the stream, does file.read all lines in the latest.net, does it return uh, an enumeration, or does it return... Uh, Ah, read lines is more efficient. So read lines, okay, so this is cool, because .NET actually has this built into it. So if we were to use the file.read lines, yeah, exactly that, file.read lines will give us one line on demand, but to make that work, so let's, uh, where is it, there it is, day three. So uh, what we're going to do now is we are going to build a mountain, and this time the mountain is going to take a file name. And instead of reading it and, and parsing the whole thing, uh, it is going to do var uh, lines equals file name dot read lines uh, no file dot read lines we need system dot io or that's not going to resolve uh, okay so there is lines now at this point lines is a i enumerable of string and is not actually going to read them into memory until we've done it uh well uh, no so it's a think about it keith um if you've got a two terabyte file you know what we really want to do so the optimum solution there would be to read the first line of the file and then apply all of the vectors to that line, and then read the next line of the file, and then apply the next iteration of all the vectors to that line, and then apply the next line of the file, and then do the same thing for for each of those. Um, so what we are going to do, so file.read lines, that is going to give us the next line of the file in every instance. Uh, height we can get rid of, and we now need to say, so in this tree count equals zero uh, for each var line in lines. So this is now going to give us an iteration, but then what we can do is we can pass in a, uh, so yeah, this is, so read lines, file read lines here is an abstraction over the stream API. Um, and there is, there is a file stream and a stream reader and a stream dot read next line and, and that kind of stuff works. Uh, that should be this dot lines equals that. So we can get rid of cells. We don't need that. Uh, this dot lines, let's uh, create a field for that one. Yep, I enumerable of string. That's nice. Read only. We're never going to be writing back to it. That is all cool. So now for each line in lines, uh, what we want to do is, so we're gonna, that's gonna pull that line into memory, but afterwards it's gonna dispose it once we've... Will it dispose it? It might dispose it. We can come back to that bit. <laughs> line and lines. Uh, so tree count. Uh, so uh, let's do a var is tree equals line. Now at this point we are gonna want our... 
um, x coordinate. So because also if the y coordinate is is more than one, we're going to need to skip across multiple lines. So oh, this is actually more interesting than it looks. Uh, da 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 da. So if uh, so we still need x and y, and x equals 0, and y equals 0. And if uh, y modulo v dot y, so if the vector modulo, if, if our y coordinate modulo the vector's y coordinate is equal to 0, then that means that this is one of the lines where we, we kind of land on and we might hit a tree. So we need to have a look at that, otherwise we can skip it. So if that if x that is, so if that is not equal to zero, uh, we continue, and then we need to say uh, var is tree equals the line we are currently looking at. The x coordinate across that line uh, is equal to it was a hash, wasn't it? But that needs to be a character because we're looking at the thing in there. Um, Da, 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 da. If is tree count tree count plus plus that's fine, and then we need to say uh, x plus equals x equals x plus uh, velta v, v dot x modulo line dot length because that's map width now return tree count, so that should, I think, give us a, uh, what do you call it? Can I convert string to string? Why not? Program CS 932, because I need to pass in the file name in there instead. So there's that, and there's that, and there's that, and boom, and minus 2.05 million! <laughs> Brilliant. How the hell did we get a negative answer out of that? <laughs> uh, something zigged when it should have zagged. Uh, oh, the tree count overflowed. Yeah. Integer overflow. Why integer overflow? Because y is never incrementing. That needs to be if y uh, plus plus, and that is gonna be a pre. Because yeah, so first one is zero equal to zero. Yes, but we want one to be the value of y after we've performed the test. There we go. So let's let's run that again. There we go, 21224,8000, that's kind of nice, but just for extra magical bonus points, uh, vector vectors, No, that's going to be hard. <laughs> What's your vector vector over? Roger, roger. Uh, so yeah, the difficulty with this one is that you're... Um, uh, as you're incrementing, in some cases, to increment to the next step on that vector, you need to consume multiple lines from your input. Whereas for the other one... You Yeah. I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead. I'm gonna back that up. I'm gonna go quietly back to the, the, the nice nice little solution that we had with two minutes left to go and uh I'm gonna I'm gonna commit that. I'm gonna do a git uh I got another window here, that'll do nicely. Uh, da -da -da -da.
Sweet. There we go. I'm going to call that day three done. This is fun. It's kind of weird. Um, like the whole trying to talk and, and code and talk and code and explain what you're doing. And uh, it, it, it's a very, very interesting way of working that, that does not lend itself to the bit where you sort of sit quietly and think really hard in silence for three or four minutes. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in, folks. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Right, raiding. Tell me, somebody, somebody, I, 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 I apparently we need to raid somebody now. Um, so uh, let me, let me, let me do the, the thing where I go onto the, the, the onto the Twitch and uh, tell me who, who should we raid? Uh, code, 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 code rushed. Oh, hang on. Ah. Uh... I'm about to cross the streams because I'm opening my own stream, so literally crossing the streams. Uh, so what we want to do is uh, go on here. And what is it I do? I type slash raid space code, code rushed. <laughs> I'm going to press enter and see what happens. <laughs> See you all tomorrow, folks. That was a lot of fun. Take it easy. Have a good one. Ha, ha, ha.